Today we study a new topic that is endometriosis. Endometriosis is, the pre is defined as the presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterus. Endometrial tissue outside the uterus anywhere else in the body. This is known as endometriosis. Normally our endometrium is present here and it is composed of two layers. One is basal Basil does not shed during the menstruation. The other layer is and this layer menstruation. So how how come this endometrium goes and spread into different parts of the body? To define this there are many theories. Let's say if our endometrium is present here, this endometrium, this endometrial tissue retro, starts retrograde movement. Retrograde movement and moves towards the fallopian tissue, fallopian tubes, and then outside and deposits anywhere else. This theory is retrograde theory and this theory states that, into, that the endometrium moves retrogradely backward through the uh, fallopian tubes into the peritoneal cavity. So if this, in, this uh, endometrial tissue is expelled outside of the fallopian tubes, it can deposit anywhere. Let's say it deposits over the ovary it can also deposit over the uterine ligaments it can also deposit here in the fimbriae it can also deposit into a pouch known as as we study like let's say this is uh, this is our uterus and behind the uterus is rectum behind the uterus is rectum and here is a pouch this pouch is known as pouch of Douglas yes recto uterine pouch or pouch of Douglas Douglas so this theory can also explain that this endometrial tissue moves outward and is deposited into the pouch of Douglas. This endometrial tissue can also deposit here in the serosal lining. This is let's say serosal lining of the bowel, and this can also be explained by this theory. Till now, we have discussed that our endometrial tissue moves retrogradely and is deposited in, can be deposited into the ovaries, can be deposited into the uterine ligaments can be deposited in the fimbriae, can be deposited in the uh, our uh, uh, serosal membranes of the uh, bowl and can also be deposited into the pouch of Douglas. Then, then the scientists came to know that it's not only this case. This endometrial tissue can also be deposited into distant peritoneal sites means inside the peritoneal cavity but distant so they then started thinking that is our retrograde theory true but till now this retrograde theory is the most acceptable of all the theories but to explain this distant peritoneal uh, spread of endometrium there comes another theory and this theory is known as metaplastic theory the first theory was the first theory was Retrograde theory. 
The second one is metaplastic theory. This metaplastic theory says that the silomic epithelium, silomic epithelium or mesothelium, this has the ability, the silomic epithelium has the ability to, di to differentiate into many different types of epitheliums. This can differentiate into many different types of epitheliums. Like it can, it, and this, this, I said that this silomic epithelium can differentiate into many different types of epithelium. So let's say there is peritoneal lining normally present. Normally there is peritoneal lining present, but if where there should be peritoneum, the silomic epithelium, it distinguishes into endometrial tissue. Endometrial tissue. So there will be deposition of endometrium there. I said that silomic uh, epithelium can distinguish into many different types of epithelium. Mesothelium can be distinguished into many different types of epithelium. So, if uh, if uh, there was to uh, if it has to form peritoneal tissue, but uh, by mistake it forms an endometrial tissue, so there will be the deposition of endometrial tissue there. So this is about metaplastic theory. The third theory is stem cell theory. This says that. Normally, if this is our circulation, in circulation, there is the flow of stem cells. Stem cells are normally flowing in the circulation. And these stem cells are 2T potent stem cells. Means that they can differentiate into different types of other epitheliums. If this is our circulation, and in this circulation, there are cells flowing known as stem cells. These stem cells are totipotent and they can distinguish into different types of epithelium. If they start depositing into a place, let's say this is our peritoneal sac or pouch of Douglas and these totipotent cell deposits there and this deposition of these totipotent cells leads to the formation of endometrium there. So this was our third theory and this is known as stem cell theory. The first one was retrograde menstruation, the second one was Metaplastic theory, the third one is the stem cell theory, that the stem cells are flowing normally in the circulation, if they deposit into a place, and here, and in that place, these stem cells converts to endometrial tissue, so we will call this endometriosis. Now, then the scientists were amazed, they were amazed by seeing some endometrial tissue into very distant sites, they saw endometrium, endometrial tissue, in lungs and they were amazed that how come endometrial tissue spread into lungs they saw endometrial tissue in the heart and again they were amazed that how come endometrial tissue reached the heart so to explain this they came up with another theory and this theory is known as hematogenous spread theory or lymphatogenous spread theory this can also be known as dissemination theory that there are blood vessels draining, veins draining or lymphatic tissue draining this endometrium and, and these, in, these can then lymphatic tissue then drains into big veins and these big veins can go toward the lungs and also towards the heart. This theory is known as Fourth theory is known as dissemination, dissemination theory or lymphatogenous spread. 
lymphadenogenous or hematogenous spread that the this endometrial tissue is carried by means of veins or lymphatic system to the distant sites such as lungs and heart so there are four theories to explain endometriosis the number one was retrograde theory or retrograde menstruation in retrograde menstruation there is backward flow of the endometrial tissue into the uh, into the peritoneal cavity and then the position of the endometrial tissue into the ovaries into the uh, uh, pouch of Douglas into the fibrillae and into the uterine ligaments and other sites there is another theory that is the metaplastic theory that the coelomic epithelium that which is known as mesothelium it has the ability to distinguish into the different types of epithelia and one of which is endometrium so if anywhere this coelomic epithelium differentiate into the uh, endometrium this will be known as endometriosis and there is another theory that was uh, lymphatogenous spread or dissemination theory that this endometrial tissue can be carried by means of lymph vessels or blood vessel to the distant sites such as heart or liver so presence of endometrium there is also known as endometriosis and the fourth theory was that okay. stem cell theory that stem cells uh, are normally circulated and if during the circulation they deposit somewhere and here these stem cells convert into the endometrium this will also be known as endometriosis so now if what if endometrium deposit here what will be the problem it is the, what can be what do you think what will be the problem if endometrium deposit anywhere else any idea if endometrium deposits here into the ovary this endometrium is not normal endometrium Keep this thing in mind that in endometriosis there are two things. The first one we just discussed that there is endometrium present anywhere else. The second thing that should be kept in mind that this endometrium is not normal. This endometrium is not normal endometrium. This is abnormal endometrium. Why? Because there is overproduction of some factors which makes this endometrium abnormal. The first one of this factor is that there is overproduction, that there is overproduction of prostaglandins. And dear students, what happens when the prostaglandins are present in great number? These prostaglandins if this is a blood vessel, what is the effect of prostaglandin on these blood vessels? There will be dilation of the blood vessel. Secondary, secondarily, that there will be blood vessel. So this blood will come out. I mean to say that prostaglandin is an inflammatory mediator as the amount of prostaglandin is increased here it will lead to inflammation and the blood and blood contents will flow outside and this will come towards this region so the zone of endometriosis will now become a zone of inflammation so inflammation will go up into in this region it will start in this region you will think that how will this endometrium will be maintained this endometrium is having is having a second very important point that it will produce its own aromatase enzyme and this aromatase enzyme has an activity to form estrogen So, as aromatase enzyme is upregulated here, aromatase enzyme is upregulated in this zone of endometriosis. As aromatase enzyme is upregulated, so more estrogen will produce, and this endometriosis tissue will keep on proliferating. So, I want to explain that this endometrium, endometrial tissue is not normal endometrium. It is abnormal endometrium. There is upregulation up of prostaglandins and these prostaglandins lead to inflammation 
Secondly, there is upregulation of aromatase enzyme. And this aromatase enzyme produces a lot of estrogen and this estrogen will keep on proliferating our endometrium tissue. Another thing that is very important now, that now scientists have discovered that there, if these two things, if these two things, prostaglandins and aromatase, if these two things are involved in the pathogenesis of endometriosis, so if we give this person aromatase inhibitors and COX inhibitors, co COX, cyclooxygenase inhibitors, so endometriosis will decrease. So nowadays we have we give COX inhibitors and COX2 inhibitors which is salicoxid and aromatase inhibitors and both plays a role in the treatment of endometriosis. So now let's come toward the a bit morphology of endometriosis.